Great. So um, while my presentations are coming up, uh, the first topic is the hackathon um, introduction. And then uh, we'll move on to a roadmap presentation. I'm very glad that uh, so many of you are here today, this morning in Amsterdam. And um, as Keith pointed out, I really think that we're at a pivotal point in the Transmart community where uh, I think we're set up to do great things, but we can also fail. And um, some of that perspective I will be uh, talking to in my roadmap presentation. But first, uh, a much more technical uh, point of view is on the hackathon. We have a hackathon running uh, throughout the conference where a number of developers will get together to uh, work on two different topics. Those topics have been um, created, or the, the input for the topics came from the architecture working group. And now, I just want to point out this working group, but because I don't think all of you uh, are familiar with it, but um, it's a um, TC that we have every two weeks where we discuss issues around the architecture of Transmart, and where we also have developed a lot of conversations about um, where the platform should go, et cetera, et cetera. You can find here, uh, if you see on the top, this is the Transmart Foundation Wiki. I just want to point out that, that you can find everything there in terms of uh, what we discussed, the note of the meeting. You can also find the meeting details if you want to come in. We are looking for more participation, especially from technical people, architects, um, people that work on you know, deploying Transmart, um, integrating Transmart in your organization. We'd love to have your contribution in this working group. So what we came up with is two topics. First of all, and now I'm going to go really technical, so sorry if, if you're a, a scientist. I might be um, you know, having some, uh, some technical terms in here, but uh, I guess we'll live through it. The first thing is we want to use Spark. I will come to uh, introducing Spark in a moment to um, use that as a scalable computational backend, and we want to put that in Transmart 1.3. And the other running uh, stream in the hackathon will be on analytics. So Spark, what is it? It's actually the largest and most active open source project in data science as of this year. Mind you, like three years ago, this didn't exist. Today, this, this is a really big topic in, in data science and in the open source world. So if, if you look at um, where the buzz is you know, from Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc., all using Spark. IBM has come out uh, a couple months ago with a big commitment on Spark. This is the new uh, buzzword, <laughs> the new Hadoop. Uh, it is really as seen as some also by a replacement for Hadoop. And um, it's you know it's a bit a little bit hard to explain because Hadoop is actually a term for a whole ecosystem, which is a range of applications. Uh, on um, data backends, on computational middleware, on cloud middleware. So um, it's really not right to say that Spark replaces Hadoop. I will show you a picture that shows the relation in a moment. Um, but what I think um, Spark did very well is they looked at Hadoop, which, mind you, it's, it's running for 10 years or so now. So um, this was really from the Java world, the first attempt at sort of um, big data scalable computing. What Spark did is learn very well from sort of the, the challenges and you could argue even mistakes uh, that, uh, that Hadoop has in its architecture. Uh, the core concepts of Spark are uh, that it uses the memory a lot, so it's really fast. The term is lightning fast computing. Um, the other thing is it does lazy evaluation. So what Spark allows you to do is um, you can describe all your data sources. And once you fire off a query, only when you, when you really ask for a result, at that moment, the Spark middleware will go in and find all your data and compute the result just in time. So that means that instead of you know, having everything in your database, it will only actually use the data that you need to get the answer. So the open source ecosystem of Spark, here you can see really how it functions. Um, it functions as a kind of middle layer, which links together on the right end here data sources. So you have um, 
uh, here, you know, all the uh, usual suspects. You can use, of course, relational databases. So we, that's what we're going to do in the hackathon. We're going to use uh, uh, the Postgres or Oracle uh, database. But you can also use, of course, some of the newer um, NoSQL backends. The other thing Spark does is it links in um, cloud uh, frameworks like Mesos, which are meant to do, um, uh, which are meant to really help you, for example, spinning up a lot of VMs to, to do a specific computation task. Um, of course, public cloud, private cloud, all that um, you can use. OpenStack, for example, you can use for uh, private cloud. And then what Spark puts on top of these two um, pillars, if you will, is a whole ecosystem of um, compute applications. Think machine learning, think visualization, uh, think um, batch processing. So what will we actually do in Hackathon? We will um, use Spark R, which has this infrastructure. Um, again, it's maybe a bit technical, but the, the, the key here is that um, Spark R, if you install this in your R client, it will actually create a GVM attached to it, a Java environment. And um, if you use uh, the, the Spark R execution on multiple worker nodes, it will actually um, run part of your app, um, computation uh, in each worker node. So it will spread out your computation over all the nodes available in the cluster. And it does so transparently. That's the great thing about it. What that means is you can just write R code like you're used to, and Spark R will be smart about trying to distribute um, the computation itself. Now, what we want to do is use Spark R, in, and we're going to use that by um, basically modifying, hacking the Transmart Core API a bit to implement the Spark R D resilient distributed data set interface. And, um, that will help us to actually put the Oracle or Postgres database um, underneath Spark. So it will become um, sort of on the right hand of this picture, we have Transmart, and then we can use the top stuff here. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go through all this. this um, Diego will explain this. Uh, he will uh, be um, introducing this topic in Hackathon. Um, my colleague Diego Verba, where are you? There, okay. And he created all these nice pictures. So thanks for that, Diego. I'm not going to go through it now. The other topic we have in the hackathon is um, visual analytics uh, or interactive analytics. Um, one of the plugins that's created uh, in the context of Transmart 1.3 by uh, uh, Sasha Herzinger. Sasha, are you here? Yes, Sasha. OK. Um, he created um, a plugin called SmartR. And this uh, really allows you to browse some of the visualizations in Transmart interactively. Um, there are a number of analytics already in SmartR. You can you can see them here, but um, I'd like to point out that um, uh, Sasha, if if you go to a website, you can see this in in, in big uh, letters. This is a work in progress, and um, there is a lot of um, help that we could do and and great things that we could build out because this is one of the lacking functionalities in Transmart today. This is what I get a lot as a response. Where are these sort of more modern uh, interactive analytics? So in the hackathon, we'll try to address, you know, maybe there are some existing workflows that we can improve. Look at the performance, uh, look at how things are displayed or how they interact. Uh, and um, I also asked around um, whether there are people that have ideas for new workflows. So if you have any, Please, you know, uh, find Sasha, and um, if, if you have a scientific idea, I want this workflow, and maybe we can take it up in the uh, hackathon. So thank you very much. That's um, that's it for the hackathon introduction. <laughs> I'd now like to move on to a um, to an entirely different topic of uh, of a whole other level. And that's um, like Keith said uh, when he um, came up here to, to, to talk about what we achieved uh, at the Ann Arbor meeting last year and, and since. What we need to think about is the future of Transmart. Where do we want to go with it? And I think one of the key questions that um, we should start out maybe, think about what is 
transmart today? And from that, of course, the question, what should it be? Is it an application which allows you to do translation research? So, you know, take clinical data, take your genomics data and, and, and try to um, test hypothesis? Uh, is it a platform? that can help you to link up several different applications, maybe your internal data sources, uh, and that can help you to leverage um, data that's out there, public data. Or is it maybe a community like we're all sitting together here and we say this is the Transmar meeting. Well, obviously I think Transmar is all of the above, but let's try to break it down by looking at the function of Transmart today as a scientific, uh, the scientific function and also the business function. So from a scientific perspective, I think what Transmart tries to do is in the context of translational medicine, so both the bioinformatics systems biology angle as well as the, the, the medicine angle, um, combine clinical genetic sensor imaging data and to improve our understanding of the underlying biology and uh, medicine practices. I think that's that's easy to to formulate that as a consensus. And uh, uh, Gerrit uh, this morning also talked about um, how much that is needed in the current scientific community to have a platform that can do it. So I don't think we have a lot of um, uh, controversy there. When you look at the business function of Transmart, how it's used today, if I look, for example, at, at all the projects that, that we're involved in here in Europe, um, we had a workshop earlier this year where we had 19 projects presenting uh, their use of Transmart. A lot of it was we use Transmart to share data within a consortium, share uh, patient data, omics data. And I think that's, that's really one of the key functions of Transmart today. It's also then really to store data and make it available for research in your organization. And to that end, I think we developed uh, things like the R clients and uh, um, the APIs that Transmart has so that you can really use it as a data storage, uh, channel the data that you need in your favorite uh, uh, Spotify R or whatever analysis platform and do research on it. To some extent, Transmart itself uh, is also used as a computational facility. I don't think that's as much, and I will come to the reasons why I think that is. Um, and lastly, this is something where Transmart can grow a lot, is if you see this slide what, that Keith had, where open source is basically an evolution of, um, of, of, of working together, of pre-competitive collaboration, if you will, and of innovation, <laughs> then what should Transmart be doing? It should be making it easy to work on the things that everyone needs, to have the things, to, to have the tools that everyone needs, the data. That means there should be a lot of public data in the platform. This is why it's great that you know Julie has this stick and we need to work on that to make it, put it on the internet and make it as easy as possible for people. Uh, you know, once I use Transmart, I have this wealth of public data that I can just tap into. I think that's a key function. And that is something we really need to work on. Also, good to point out that Transmart is not there in isolation. So there's a whole ecosystem of applications, again, that, that works together with Transmart, like CBIA Portal, I2B2, uh, which are very tightly integrated, but also some of the more removed ones, um, like XNAT, for example. There's a number of integrations to do uh, imaging with Transmart. I just said that. Um, it's hard to have Transmart as a computational function in your organization. And it's also hard to build analytics. If you stop a moment to think about why that might be, why is it so difficult to create workflows in Transmart or analytics workflow that everyone uses? Well, it's because there's so many standpoints. There are so many different ways you can approach the translational um, uh, challenge. And, Every you know expertise, every function in an application uh, in a in an organization looks at this different. If you're in a hospital and you're you're doing clinical genomics, you have a, a very different standpoint than if you're doing working on bioinformatics pipelines. And what we're trying to do with Transmart is really sort of serve all these. 
so everyone do that. I think the current version of Transmart, the current way Transmart work is not enough. We have to make it easy for people to build in different types of analytics, different types of interfaces, different types of workflows. And right now we're still working on the, the assumption that you know it's, it's one application that can do it all. I think that's, that's some of the core uh, problems really. So if we take that all together, what I just said, um, what should, where should Transmart go? And probably this is not, you know, it's not a big surprise to any of you. It should handle a lot of data types, right? All these different data types, that's where Transmart comes in. Bring them together. Um, I think we're doing that already pretty well. But of course, in the world of sensors, imaging, there's a lot to gain still. Um, this, this is just no brainers right here. We need a platform that's secure, that's scalable, that's interoperable, that has federation built in. Some of these things you're working on in Transmart 1.3, but some of them we cannot address with the current architecture, unfortunately. Like having really scalable support for genomics data. Um, we've tried to build that in, but we really need to change the architecture around to do that. And the other thing we, we need to do is um, create a plugin architecture. Now, is this all my opinion? Not really. I'll uh, actually now do a little um, history, a, a little flashback, and uh, see how we came to this list. And why, you know, maybe you ask yourself the question, um, why are we not here today? Well, let's look at that. Two years ago, here in Amsterdam, this was actually before the Sanofi meeting, um, we had a, also a transport meeting in Amsterdam, just a few kilometers from here at the VUMC, it was hosted uh, by um, uh, the VUMC. So there we had about 70 people attending, and I gave this presentation. I said that um, Transmart, you know, today it's great, it's a tool, it needs to become a platform or ecosystem, I use that word. Uh, and I said that you know, we really have a chance to write history because I saw the great potential of this community. Well, this was more than two years ago, and I'm still um, saying sort of the same thing. Does that mean that we have not advanced as a community? Absolutely not. Um, what we've done is we've brought, first of all, all the Transmart versions together, but maybe more importantly, through this, for example, through the development of the APIs, through the development of ETL, all these things, and through hackathons and workshops like this one in January um, this year, we have really developed an understanding of what it is we want to achieve. Because I can make the bold statement that today, you know, what we really want to do with Transmart, there is no platform out there that can do it. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a, a commercial uh, person now for a few years. So I work in a commercial environment. I have competitors. I know these other products. But what we want to do with Transmart, it's not there. But if we would sit still and wait for two years, I'm pretty sure there are commercial alternatives available. So now is the time after we've done all this thinking, for example, in this workshop, to really start building that. That's my key message. In this workshop, we had all the core committers together from, um, from Transmart, the, the, all the persons that uh, you know, commit on an almost daily basis. They do fit in one room. Um, and um, this is from the developer standpoint what needed to be done. First of all, we need to make it easier for new developers um, to add features, to contribute to Transmart. What this is saying is in a positive way, you could also phrase in a negative way, currently it's too hard to, to start doing your own thing with Transmart as a developer. Improve the maintainability of the code base. This is really a, a core concern of all the developers that are working on it. Um, this is something that we'd like to improve. 
And um, you see here also that it says standardize the way of working in the open source community. What this means is that you know over time, we should, over the last two years, I would say, we, we've really built a way of working together. And we're now at the point that we're professionalizing this with the quality initiative and um, the other working groups that we have. So for the developers, for, for external people that are not yet in this community to come in and do their thing with Transmart, they need to be able to find how you do that. That's really the, the, um, the outcome of, of, of that discussion that we had. There's a lot of technical outcome as well, but I just want to point out that this is key and this is one of the challenges that we have to find out also for the, now, uh, the new version of Transmart, the next one. Further down in the past in history, we also had a meeting in April uh, at Imperial College, which was called the EO, oh, actually uh, 18 EU projects that, um, that presented their use of Transmart there. And we had a lot of discussions about uh, which features should Transmart add basically, or where should the platform go? Uh, what are we missing in, in today's Transmart 1.2 platform? As you can see, really the top request was for uh, having a scalable genomics backend. Uh, but also some of the aspects here are handling longitudinal data, handling um, data that's cross-trial, or as, uh, as Paul Aviak would say, why, have you, why do you even have a trial in there? This, I just want my data. Um, we have cohort selection uh, that needs to improve and, and a lot of other aspects. So from a functional standpoint, these are top requests, and um, some of these are a little bit hard to do in today's version of Transmart. It's, for example, possible to load cross-trial data. It's possible to put longitudinal data, but you really have to figure out on the wiki uh, how to do that. Um, so some of these things we took up in Transmart 1.3. Um, in the current, currently in the development community, we're working, for example, uh, this is with Sanofi on a new analytics framework to really build uh, a better way of doing the analytics workflows in Transmart, improving the APIs, you know, uh, working with uh, Pfizer here to, to uh, improve the GWAS functionality of the platform. I already mentioned Smart R. There's a lot of um, sort of visual improvements and, and small fixes that have been done uh, also uh, through eTrix and um, improvements for federation plus uh, a prototype of a new cohort selection interface. Actually, this was built with the IMI project translocation. And I think all these are very good preparations which sort of set us up for the new version of Transmart, which I think should be still the same functionality that, um, that I presented at the beginning of my talk. It's really, this is, this is the challenge that we have. We want to be able to find new insights in biology and medicine, and we need to deal with a lot of data to do that. So this new version of Transmart I keep talking about. What I think we didn't have two years ago is an understanding of um, how exactly we should do that. Both how does the community work? So how, how do you work with open source? How, how do you work with developers? How do you work for different organizations? Um, but also, uh, to some extent, from a, from a functionality and from a technical perspective, like what should the platform do and what shouldn't it be? And to my knowledge, and, and, and in my opinion, and this is not, you know, this is something that I've discussed with, with a lot of people, we do have that understanding today. So over these two years, we really built a deep understanding of where we want to move. That means to me that the logical next step is to start doing it. Start building the new version of Transmart. And does that mean we have to throw away everything? Of course not. And um, we have to be smart about this. But from a developer standpoint, it's clear that we need to do something. And how exactly this is going to be done, I think it's not, you know, it's not up to me uh, or you alone to, 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 to decide that. This is something that we should discuss. 
Uh, like Keith said, we have a uh, Transmart Foundation board meeting coming up this afternoon to discuss this very topic. And um, I think also this is the time to think about what your role, either in terms of, you know, um, uh, putting manpower, uh, uh, putting cash, uh, putting um, insights, putting requests, all of that for the new version of Transmart. But from my presentation, I think the consensus is clear. Uh, we need to have a new version of the platform that's secure by design uh, so that it doesn't take a lot of knowledge. You just can't go wrong. It's secure um, from the start. That is scalable, which means that it also can handle you know, um, uh, thousands of genomes and hundreds of users, etc. It needs to be modular and interoperable meaning that um, if you build something of your own, if you have your own data sources or if you have your own uh, analytics software, it should be easy to plug it in. And last but not least, I think this is actually the most important thing. If we really want to build an open source community, if we want all those IMI projects, uh, you know, all these projects that Gerrit had is on his slide to, to work with us and, and to work with this community, if we want to enable vendors to build their own software on top of Transmart. I get a lot of phone calls um, uh, from vendors like, how can we integrate with Transmart? Can you tell me how to do it? And then I have to point them to the documentation, which is there, but they also need expert knowledge. And you know, my vision is that at some day, they don't need expert knowledge. They can just go find the documentation, figure out how to do it. I think that's what we need to do for the next version of Transmart. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd love to have some discussion. So I'll just add a, a quick comment. I think one of the key things about uh, where we are with the platform is that um, we need to put a lot of these. Oh, there we go. Thanks, everyone. We need to put a lot of these principles uh, into the, the design of the platform from the very beginning. One of the things that I think is a big lesson over the last you know, two years working with 1.1 and 1.2 is trying to retrofit scalability and security and maintainability and reliability is almost impossible. Um, those have to be design principles and, and designed into the platform from the beginning. And the opportunity we have in looking at a, a next generation platform is to make sure that we get the design right and then everything that we execute is built upon good design. You know, for lack of a better word, it's, you know, when you think of building building a house, you know, it gets it sort of double entendre. You have to build it on a strong foundation. Um, I don't know if you like that double entendre. But, uh, uh, but we need to build on a very strong foundation. And I think the, the challenge for us in going forward from an architecture perspective, but we'll spend time talking about the board meeting and we'll go on afterwards, is how do we build that strong foundation to make sure that everything we build, in fact, has that basis for moving forward. So I think it's a, an incredibly important challenge. I think um, part of such a community uh, should be users. So if we um, only build products and don't have users and don't have um, actual studies in the system, then, then we're not going to be successful. And so I would like to bring in the user perspective also in the discussion that uh, that case just uh, started. And, and I can see from his expertise and, and what he mentioned that, um, well, uh, the expert in the communities have been working on this for now two years and they have a, uh, a deep understanding of what we have now and what is needed to get to where we would want to be. Um, and that is great, of course, and also the fact that, that uh, well, basically at this point in time, uh, we're safe because there's no one else that can do it. Uh, but the actual users that are sitting there with their data, PhD students, uh, BIs, whatever, they can tell them one system from the other. They do not know that there is nothing better than Transmart. They just go and have a look and they, they, they just send out one PhD student to, student to check out something on a Sunday afternoon. And if it's too complicated to uh, grasp in, 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 say, 10 minutes, then people move on. 
and, and that's reality. So how are we um, going to uh, balance that? How are we going to, um, um, well, handle the fact that, that you're still asking users to um, to have even more patience than they than that they may have had uh, so far. Yeah, this. So, so go ahead. Um, we we agree with you, and um, we uh, over this year we've put a lot of case studies together. So as the developers were coming out with things, as scientists we were saying, hey, this is how it's really working. It may be pass passing IT, it may be passing code, but this is how real users are using it. This is what's happening with the data. This is how it's working. So I think as the foundation, and that we are getting together and we're saying, hey, timeout, sort of like we need to look at it from a, a science scientific and a user and a case study perspective and I think you'll see a lot of examples we showed last year and a lot of example on case studies and real use um, applications this year as well. But I, I would like to have case view on that one as well. Well I think yeah. what you're saying Gerrit is the worst thing we can do is now hit the pause button for two years and then um, there will be nothing left of the Transmart community. If I you know translate your um, what you said into something a bit more political incorrect. Um, I think that's a very valid point, and that is indeed the, 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 the worst thing we can do. We definitely don't want to kill this community, and we want to have the platform as it is today, which already, like I presented to you, it's used a lot, there's a lot of uh, projects using it, there's users uh, engaging with it. Not enough. Well, let me jump in here because yeah. I, I'll tell you one of my biases is that every time I hear developers talking about users, I get kind of a, a cringe. And I think we, we need to rethink that. And inside the foundation, I do this as well, which is we don't have users. We have customers. And we need to think about that. They're not, they're not you know, user to me seems like a parasite sitting on the side that we somehow have to deal with. A customer is someone you have to serve. And so we don't have users. We have customers. And we really have to think from that perspective. And one of the things I learned over the past two years is what the customer needs is data. And so we've really focused. Julie has been a great leader in this in trying to get more content on the platform, doing some things around open data with the Datathon. I think it's, it's getting data. And then we've learned over the, the course of the last two years as well that when we get data and we get customers on board, the platform has deficiencies. And we need to address those deficiencies as well. So I think let, let's stop thinking about users. Let's think about customers, right? Let's think about people that we really want to serve and bring on board. And then let's think about how, how we get them what they need with technology and with data. Yeah, I just, um, case, I just have a question actually on this because I think in this platform, new version of the, the Transmart platform, how do you envision to incorporate this user aspect into this platform? Because using Keith's um, the, an analogy of a, a house, a house has to have a great, really good foundation and all these features and stuff. But if it uh, if the you know, nobody buys it because it doesn't look right or or you know it doesn't function in the way that's most efficient for the for the user, then nobody will buy it, right? So especially now we have a chance, I feel like it's a really good chance that we have decent amount of users who really understand the use cases and then also actually understand kind of where Transmart is coming from. So I really appreciate, you know, if from your perspective, how a user can play a role in this aspect. Yes, uh, well, metaphors and analogies are always very dangerous. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't know if I should go along with that one. Um, for me, you know, involvement of the users, it's not, um, I, I don't think it's even a, a thing that, 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 that should be a point of discussion. You start with a vision of what you want to do, right? And I think that vision is already there. It's the, the, the Transmart as we use it today. Um, and all the requests that we have on top of it, like this, this list of more than 100 things that came out of the, the London meeting, for example. Um, but the, the message that I'm trying to get across, okay, if I go along with the metaphor, is that, um, you know, that the house is in need of uh, some restructuring. And we need to do that restructuring. And if we do it, we'll be able to build out the house after, which much, much more faster. This is really, you know, that last point for a key example, documentation. This is one of the things where really 
we limit ourselves as a community. We could do so much more if we had more people, more projects engaged in Transmart. But yeah, like you say yourself, Gerrit, people don't have much patience today. It needs to be clear how to use it. We've gone, I think, we've come a tremendous way in terms of uh, where we were two years ago. We now have YouTube videos, how to use Transmart, we have the trainings, etc. cetera. Um, so I think we continue that path, but we also need to do this restructuring. And um, I'm sorry that's my message because, you know, as a user uh, or as a scientist or as a, as a customer, you're just looking at what can I do with it. Um, but I would like to point out that we're also in a business context here where we just, with working now with this community, while we could be working with so much more if we take care of these things. So I'm, I'm not going to counter argue that, but the thing that I'm missing is that, and, and I have put some of these logos on my slides, there are these um, initiatives which are uh, very well known in, uh, in, in the research community and appealing to our potential customers or users, whatever you want to call them, like the, uh, the Precision Medicine Initiative whatever you may think of it, 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 it is there and, and it, uh, it gets a lot of um, uh, um, uh, coverage in, in the press, in, in, in journals like Nature. We have the Global Alliance for Data and Health, uh, uh, for Genomics and Health, and we don't have much presence with Transmart in there. So what we actually, uh, what would be an ideal situation if people from there would say, hey, um, we need uh, solutions for data integration and all of the purposes that um, that Transmart should uh, should serve and say, well, we're not in an ideal world, but the best out there is Transmart. And I do not hear them saying that. That's, I think that is a big issue. I think that that's a great point, Garrett. And one of the things that we have to do here is, is when we look around, you know, I, I pointed out John and Keith and Terry and Peter and, but that's not really the foundation. Look, look at the person sitting next to you. That's the person, the foundation. I guarantee that we've been represented as a community at every one of those meetings, and people aren't getting up and talking about it. Uh, we need to be proactive in what we're doing and work together to make those things happen. I think getting back to Sherry's point is that um, the way we've organized ourselves and what we're doing over the course of the next three days is thinking about not just the code. We have the code committee, and we're thinking about architecture and design and engineering. Um, we're thinking about the data, the content and things that drive people onto the platform and why they're going to come there. And then we're thinking about the community. What, is, what does the customer want to do with the platform and how does that work? And we have three different efforts that everybody here is participating in uh, that help us really think about all these aspects and bring it together. But, you know, if you want to take the house analogy or a car analogy is, you know, when I go to buy a car, I go to buy a house, I don't need to understand how it was engineered. I just need to know it was engineered well. Right? And it serves my need as the customer. That's our challenge, is that we have to put all those pieces together. And to Kay's point, you know, Transmart version 1 is a fantastic working prototype. We've been able to test a lot of the things that we want to do, that we need to do on that platform. But it's not engineered in such a way that we can continue to do that. And so there's a re-engineering that happens in a, in a next generation uh, that should be transparent to a customer, an end user, right? but should change what we can actually accomplish with it so that we're actually more, more highly and better aligned with what that, that customer, that end user, needs to accomplish. And I think so, what we need to leave and start with is what the customer wants. Because yes. Because if you've got a beautifully engineered house, it's got no bedrooms, you're not going to sleep in it, you ain't going to go in it. Well, so we need to answer questions. If we can answer scientific questions and we use Transmart and we publish, then we have the utility. We have a great platform sitting in a garage and nobody well, I think just to add to your point, Julie, is that I think we have to think about what the customer needs, because sometimes the customer doesn't know how to articulate their question because they haven't seen it before. You know, there's the whole Henry Ford example, which is if Henry Ford delivered what the customer wanted, he would worked on faster horses, right? Um, he said, "I know what the customer needs. I'm going to engineer something that does that." And I think that's where we have to think. Yeah, and um, if I may comment here too. So basically, let's first decide what are we really developing? Are we developing just a simple tool, right, like an Excel, right? Or are we pre presenting a translational research use case? 
where we're actually telling people what to do with data and how they can do it. Because I think what's lacking right now is that understanding of what we really want. We can engineer to death, but we do not have a complete translational research use case from the data all the way to analysis. And that's actually to your point of workflows. It's hard to engineer, it's hard to imagine, but that research use case has not been, to the best of my knowledge, worked out through completely. And that's why we cannot even offer anything in terms of workflows because we don't know how to do it. Our approach to that was baby steps, okay? We load the data, starting with as simple as TCGA data, okay? And try to analyze it and find these holes which we try to, you know, cover and, and, and fix. And I think that is where, you know, as a community, I think that's the best uh, venue to approach that. We can collectively develop those things and decide what, what needs to be done. In the community committee, we have a working group on use cases, which is specifically charged with this task. With this task. And so if we don't have it, let's let's get involved there and let's fix that. Because we, we, we have set up an infrastructure to do that, and if we're not delivering, let's go fix that. For the sake of time... Okay. Yeah, we need to check the time. For the sake of time, I... Hank, Jay, and then we move on in the program. Hi. Hi, Case. Thank you for your very clear presentation. I liked it uh, from many aspects. Uh, the one thing I was missing, actually, in a roadmap session, I expect something of a timeline. Hmm? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and uh, at least uh, it could be a vision of a timeline or whatever, but uh, where you can balance the needs from the user customer perspective and the technology challenges and the resources which you which you need uh, making making the transition and have you any ideas or is it the result of this of this uh, workshop today or tomorrow hmm? i have a lot of ideas but i don't think you know it's up to me to propose a timeline i think that really should be a topic of discussion and again, we have the board of meeting, uh, the board of directors meeting this afternoon, and that would be a good opportunity to maybe see, you know, from the different uh, participating institutes and organization, what their view is, and see if we can find a consensus. It's also about the the funding that we can have for this. Yeah. Okay. Final remark. Yeah. So uh, one final question for you in looking at the competitive landscape now and two years from now. You gave a talk that honestly is looks like what I would expect from a technology perspective. What we need to understand is what the competitive advantage of Transmart is relative to emerging competitors. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask you what that is. And I will say this. Transmart is not a pilot or a prototype for Pfizer, for J&J, &J, for Sanofi, for Takeda, for Etrix, for Harvard. We use this as an enterprise system. We position it as an enterprise system. And the message that I need to bring back from this week to my customers who fund this has got to be a message that we can all believe in, get behind, promote, and ultimately we need to demonstrate that that Transmart is not going to be an application that can be driven or could be driven by any single commercial entity. We have to understand what the differentiation is and that's what we need to promote for something of the magnitude of what you're proposing. So I'll go back to where do you think the differentiation is a year and a half from now? To me, it's an, it's a simple answer, but I might be, you know, it's. Uh, I think the the um, the answer to me is open source. The fact that we can building this all together, um, for example, in in the, let's say pharma IT world, right? That's that's where where where, where you um, you're speaking from. Um, I think that many of the pharma IT organizations today understand that there is no such thing uh, to do translational research, that Transmart is, is the best there is right now. 
um, and that um, there is a lot of developing needs, like NGS, right? This, this is not just me thinking about the next um, uh, version of, of, of a platform technologically. This is thinking about what are the challenges that we have in the coming years. And one of the challenges is the influx of genomics data. So what it boils down to is um, right now there is an opportunity to get together and build this, like build the next version of it, which means we're going to incorporate a number of things we didn't have so far. And um, we're also setting the, the foundation for, you know, this community to grow for the next 10 years. Because I, my, if, if my talk came across as, you know, trying to say that Transmart today is, is nothing, <laughs> then I have really made a big mistake. It is an enterprise platform at Pharma. It's used in academic institutes. It's used in projects. So we already have something great. And I think it's probably the best out there. But I'm also thinking of, where I, I'm not here for, for, for the short haul. I want to have something that's still there in 10 years. And that's why we also have to start on this now. That's my perspective. Okay, for, the, for the sake of time. Um, I'm going to give you the answer. Right, I'm going to give you the answer. We got into this so that every institution who is going to be involved in a translational collaboration, whether you're an academic or a commercial entity or a nonprofit, could use the same information system. That's why we're here. That's the mission of the foundation. That's the mission it was that's the mission two years ago. That's the mission today. That's the mission I want to see in two years. And I want I want us all to think about this trajectory, which look, I'm I'm here to be convinced. I'm here, I want this trajectory. But understand where the differentiation is because I don't think there's a commercial entity that can produce a technically equivalent com, you know, competitor that can give us that, that, that would be able to also accommodate that mission.